What's going on today, YouTube? Jason with X-Bacon Gaming. I am so excited. I'm going to bring you the step-by-step -step build tutorial for installing the EK Titan X Pascal cooler. The Actel whatever, black one. Onto the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. If you guys are aware, the 1080 Ti coolers are not available. Uh, speaking with uh, EK, they said it will be available this week at the time of the shooting. Um, but who knows what stock's going to look like, how long it's going to take. Um, I ordered the Pascal off New Egg, got it in uh, three days. It's pretty quick. Um, so they do have plenty of Pascals out there. Uh, does work perfectly. No issues at all. Um, only issue I'm having is finding a backplate. <laughs> I've ordered it from EK in Slovenia what, five days ago and it still hasn't shipped. Not sure what that's all about, but here we go, guys. Step by step tutorial tear down and install. Let's do it. Okay, guys, I want to get a few housekeeping uh, items out of the way. Uh, if you see that bottom right big screw right there, there's a sticker over there. Um, course if you remove it then you will void your warranty on this product so I want to get that out of the way also um, if you do not own a screwdriver set that has a really small cross tip don't even attempt this uh, you can't just go into your dad's toolbox and pull out a uh, <laughs> pull out a standard old Phillips head screwdriver um, I picked up mine from Micro Center it was uh, and it's from inland it has every uh, screwdriver tip and allen head key and uh, you'll also need a four millimeter uh, socket to take the standoffs off standoffs off uh, so if you do not own those things don't even try to tear into this thing um, so I'll just go ahead and fast forward this until I got that back plate off All right, guys, so taking the back plate off is very simple. Tons of screws. Try to find something to put them in. Um, this is the point where you're going to need the four millimeter uh, on the nut driver or a socket. I uh, have seen guys use pliers. That is definitely not something I would ever advise. Um, some of these four millimeter standoffs are going to be very tight. Um, they do appear to be Loctited in. Um, so just take it easy, run them out, not an issue. Um, should not have any problems with this part uh, but again if you do not have a socket that small get one at Home Depot for a buck or two uh, I would definitely advise using that so I uh, will fast forward the rest of this Okay, and I'm back. Now you're going to have to flip it over and those two bottom screws uh, next to all the ports, those are the only two that need to come out. The two bottom there and there. I repeat, none of the other ones need to come out. Um, if you guys see, I do not have, you do not have to take anything off of the shroud itself. Um, the only, to separate the PCB from the cooler, 
You only have to take off the screws that I have shown you. There are plenty of bad videos out there about taking apart video cards where they're taking off the shroud screws and separating the fan and all that. That does not have to happen unless you really want to go in there and see what your card's all about. Feel free to do it. It's your card. Uh, but there's absolutely no reason to take off anything other than the screws that I've shown you and the PCB and everything separate just fine. Okay, so once you get the back plate off, the standoffs off, and the two screws out of the backside where the ports are, the PCB is ready to separate. Now keep in mind, it is held together by thermal pads and thermal goop, uh, so it is stuck. Be very careful. Give it a little bit of a pry, a little bit of a, you know, a twist, a spin, and it will separate. Just, there you go. Be very careful, very easy. Now comes the part, well, probably the hardest part of this whole thing is getting off the connectors here that control the fan and then control the, um, the G-Force RGB lighting or LED lighting or the green lights. Um, so be very careful trying to get these off. I've always found it easier to get the white one off first. That's the one that's on the bottom. I'll flip it here in a minute and show you. Um, it's always been easier for me to do it that way than trying to get the black one off for some reason. Uh, so what I did is I got put on a flat tip uh, screwdriver bit onto my screwdriver and there's a little lip on the connector itself that you can kind of twist your screwdriver in there to try to get it to pop out. I'll show you that here in a second. So here it is guys, little teeny screwdriver. Be careful, again, this is a very delicate connector. Uh, pull the wires right out of it if you're not careful. Again, this is the hardest part of this whole disassembly is getting these off. And if you don't care, if you're never gonna put the stock blower and stuff back on, then you know, do what you want. But um, just just pry it. Don't, don't go crazy. Uh, bottom one's the same. And then here's where I had a little bit of an, an issue. I don't know if you guys have noticed the thermal paste on the on the chip itself but it was crusty like and I don't know why I've never seen it like that um, I've seen a lot of guys that actually advocate taking your card apart right away and replacing your thermal paste um, problem with that is of course you're gonna void your warranty but I gotta admit that thermal paste was not very good I'm not sure what MSI has got going on here but that was not very good I'm just gonna put it out there uh, so if you do want to take your card apart to basically uh, replace your thermal paste, um, it might not be a bad idea because I was less than impressed with this one. And then of course, if any of your thermal pads stay attached to the PCB, uh, transfer them back over to the blower. Um, those are some weird thermal pads there. I'm, it's almost like toothpaste. But make sure you transfer everything back over. All right, guys, so now you got to clean. Um, I use coffee filters and isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you want something that's not going to transfer a bunch of lint um, onto that. So most most items can do it. Um, this thermal paste was terrible. I'm incredibly disappointed, but I digress. Uh, so once you get uh, the actual chip that I cleaned, um, okay. So here's where I wanted to point out the difference between this and the actual Titan, uh, Titan X Pascal. If you notice there on the left side, there's one missing memory module. Um, and then also the on the right, it's really hard to point out, uh, the dual link DVI connector is gone. That is basically the only thing that's different. Um, and that's why that uh, the EK water block uh, Titan Pascal will work on this cooler and will work perfectly because uh, nothing's changed really physically with the layout. Okay guys, and something else I like to do is I like to remove, uh, run some isopropyl alcohol off every single spot where uh, an old uh, thermal pad was on. Uh, just to remove any adhesive or build up or any junk, dust, anything like that. Uh, quick wipe with the same 
the coffee filter, nice propyl alcohol, cleans the module and allows for you know, a better bond. I don't know. It's just something I like to do. Okay, guys. Uh, inside your uh, kit, you're going to get thermal pads. Uh, these ones are pre-cut for the memory modules. Uh, they don't give you enough to do all of them. I'm not sure if my kit was shorted or what, uh, but you can get excess ones later down the road when you're applying the long strips in another place, and I'll show you that here in a second. So when you're applying these on the backside, if you guys are careful about how much you use uh, that little strip I just placed there, um, there is a lot left over uh, to get those other three memory modules. Just you have to cut them yourself. You're gonna have to be very careful with the amount you use because you definitely could run out. All right, guys, I didn't show up, but I actually was able to trim that pad I'm installing right now uh, to get the other three modules done. If you see the uh, middle bottom one is a hair thin because I was a little bit overzealous with the uh, one of the other modules but there is enough to get it all done All right, now the tedious job of peeling the blue backing off these. It is a pain. I, I do it this way because I don't like to transfer finger goo or if you touch them, then they're going to pull off the module. So if you carefully use a, a small screwdriver, you can separate it and peel it off, hopefully. And yeah, let's see. Uh, you're going to want to take the blue off of all of them. All right, guys, now is the time of the video where everyone points out that you use too much thermal paste, not enough thermal paste, your method is crap, you apply it wrong, who taught you how to do this, yada, 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 let them begin. If you follow EK's instructions on how to put thermal paste on this thing, you're going to put way too much on there. Uh, they want you to do this crazy cross thing. Um, I went with that method. That tube was completely pressurized, so the second I pushed on the syringe, it just gooped out, uh, but it is a fine amount of thermal paste okay guys so using both hands you want to flip the card over uh, being cognizant not to separate what you just put together uh, in the kit you're gonna get all these screws and you're gonna get these um, plastic or nylon or whatever they are washers um, definitely use those uh, also, if you are going to apply a backplate at this time, you're also going to refer to your backplate instru instructions to find out which one of these you don't need to put on on this step because you're going to turn around and put them on on the backplate step. Uh, I tried to fit an EK Titan X backplate on here hoping it would work. It did not work, so it does have to be the Pascal version, which makes sense. Um, I was just hoping it would work, so fast forward.
All right, guys, it's all said and done. It's in, it's plumbed, it's what? It's done. Uh, so I went ahead and ran uh, Fire Strike. Uh, the absolute max temps, I believe I saw, was like 37. Um, it. <laughs> if, if you guys have done, if you've water cooled a card before, you can, you know the performance. It's significant. Um, 1290 score, not bad. Um, so let me just say, it's it's not hard. If you guys are afraid to do it, I understand. It is a very expensive product tearing apart a video card. Uh, but the gains, I feel, are worth it. Um, especially after you saw the thermal paste that was on uh, from the factory. So, um, there you go. There's some temps. All right. All right, guys. Uh, I'd like to take, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Um, it does help me out. If you guys like it, please give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs down. Um, like and subscribe. Uh, it does help us out. A lot of time and effort went into this video, uh, and if it helps a couple people, it helps a couple people. Um, so if you guys were looking in that fire strike, um, the highest temperature I saw, I know it's really hard to see. <clears throat> the highest temperature I saw, I believe, was 37C. Uh, last night, after I got all the plumbing done, um, I did play uh, a Wild Lance for about four hours, and I think the max temp I saw was 45C, uh, which is... A far cry from the mid to high 80s I was seeing on the blower style cooler for the Founders Edition. Uh, so if you guys have the knowledge or the or the technical ability to do this, it will pay off. Um, rig is way quieter now. It's uh, it's exceptional. Uh, so re the main reason why I made this video is to show that the Titan X Pascal um, water block does work on this 1080 Ti and it works perfectly. Um, am waiting for a Titan X Pascal backplate, uh, but like I said, the 1080 Ti's will be out soon. But everything I did in this will apply uh, to you installing that on your with with the 1080 Ti block. So again, guys, uh, Mike and I would like to thank you guys. Uh, thank my subscribers who have been with us. Um, you know, we really do appreciate it, guys. Uh, again, like, subscribe. Uh, more content coming. Uh, 